February 16th is a date on which a lot of people celebrated something that they shouldn't have been happy about at the time and certainly should not have retained their enthusiasm for over a great many decades, although an amazing number of people did. Because it's the anniversary of Fidel Castro seizing power in Cuba in 1959. Now, I could say an enormous number of things about Fidel Castro before I got to anything nice, including the fact that in characteristic of fraudulent tyrannical regime fashion, the maximum leader went through a number of different jobs. Sometimes he was prime minister, sometimes he was president, sometimes he was that guy's brother. But always he was the person you got shot or jailed for criticizing. And I could also note that when he finally grew too feeble to maintain his grip on power, he handed it over to his brother. Would someone like to tell me what possible principle there is in communism for a dynastic succession? But that's how they do it in North Korea too. It's a sure sign of a total lack of legitimacy that you cannot figure out who ought to be the successor. So it's either the guy who shot everybody who else who wanted the job or else you revert to this very primitive kind of biological thing. Though speaking of biology, it's worth noting that Fidel Castro had a daughter by one of his many infidelities. He was a thoroughly unlikable man in all kinds of ways. He had a daughter who fled Cuba in disguise and became an opponent of the regime. He also had a sister who opposed him from exile in Miami. So blood may be thicker than water, but some of the Castro blood saw quite clearly the evils of the regime headed by Fidel with Raul at his side. The other thing that was, maybe there's some excuse for naivete when he first took power. I mean, he, he did replace a regime that was so nasty that the United States actually turned on it. They renounced their ally before Castro overthrew him. People tend to forget that. The United States was quick to recognize Castro. But surely, and the New York Times called him the Robin Hood of the Caribbean. So yeah, okay, there was a bunch of liberal applause at the beginning. But surely at some point they should have gotten over their infatuation with him. They should have recognized that they had picked an unsuitable figure to whom to attach their aspirations for a better world. And the left is far too slow to do this. They idealized Fidel Castro. I mean, when he died, our prime minister lavished praise on him. What was he thinking? Later on, Robert Mugabe attracted the support of progressives. They overlooked the warning signs. They continued to defend him well past the point where it was obvious that he was basically a mad tyrant. There is some feeling apparently that if you're going to be suitably critical of your own society, you have to be wildly uncritical of alternatives, no matter how repulsive they are. But at some point, surely it's time for the left to stop having what looked like adolescent crushes on unsuitable foreigners, to stop loving people like Fidel Castro or Robert Mugabe, to say nothing of the earlier enthusiasm for Stalin. You just, you have to, if you like evidence-based decision-making, look at the evidence. The guy's repressive, he's a tyrant, he's impoverishing his people, he doesn't represent our higher ideals. For that matter, we could also ask ourselves, with Fidel Castro finally out, we could ask ourselves on February 16th, why are there still Che Guevara t-shirts? If you're enjoying these commentaries, please visit my website, that's www.johnrobson.ca, and make a pledge to help support my work. I also keep watching and subscribing to The Rebel for the news and commentary that you will not get anywhere else.